Hello everyone, welcome back. We were talking about CGC grading today. Specifically, I'm going to give examples of every single CGC graded book in an individual grade that I have, show close up, video, and shots of exactly why they got that grade and details, and then cross reference that with the rubric that CGC uses. I do not have anything below a 3.0, so I wanted to show an example in a raw book exactly what a below 3.0 grade would be. This falls under that low grade category because this, this cover is detached. Uh, one of the staples on the bottom is uh, no longer through, through the whole book and there's just some significant wear, water staining, big issues with this book. Okay, so this is our first book this is a 3.0 off-white to white pages. I'm going to read the description of the 3.0 and then we're going to do close-ups of the front and back to show you an example. A collectible that shows significant evidence of handling with several moderate to major defects. This 3.0 grade oftentimes becomes a catch-all, I think. Um, they look at a book and they automatically say, okay, is this a 3.0? Like that that's considered a low grade book and is it worse than a 3.0? I think that's kind of where they start from and then is it is it bad enough to get below a good very good. So that is an example of a 3.0 on the front. See some water damage, major defects. You can see the water damage on the back color breaking folds, color breaking spine ticks, generalized wear, soiling. Um, I mean it's it's a low it's a low grade book. Okay. So this is Batman 189. This is a 3.5 off white pages. So according to CGC, a 3.5 is a very good minus. A below average collectible with several major defects or an accumulation of multiple moderate defects. So we've got multiple color breaking spine ticks, all the corners are blunted. Color rub, staples look weaker. Colors are still very good on this book. Here's the back. The dirt really kind of shows on the back of the book here. Got some wrinkling and some folds in the, the corner of the top left there. And then we've got a huge chunk out of the bottom left corner. This book would be significantly improved with a clean and a press. May be able to get a 4.0 if I ended up doing that. So this is a 4.0. This is a very good or a VG. This is a below average collectible with multiple moderate defects. Blended corners, color break top left. There's writing on the cover. Looks like the white could be cleaned a bit, possibly. Corners blunted again. There's folds that breaks color. But you're probably already kind of seeing the difference, the significant difference between a 3.0 and a 4.0. Staple, you know, it's kind of got that, that wear. Um, all across that spine, just that generalized wear, that, that's an automatic 4.0 when you see something like that. A little tear in the bottom of the page. Okay, we're on to the 4.5. This is Tomb of Dracula number 10, 4.5 off-white pages. This is a very good plus. 
a slightly below average collectible with multiple moderate defects. So we've got that chipping on the top, generalized, little tear in that top left corner, fold in the top right corner that breaks color, color breaking spine ticks, spine ticks in general. This is often times what you'll see with older books is big folds in the bottom right, that dog earring. They kind of lay over top of each other and after years and years and years of being compressed like that, they start breaking color and then you get that very common look in that bottom right corner. Now I cleaned this book myself. I thought I did a pretty good job with it. I would say I probably brought this book up from a, a 3.5 or a 4.0 to this 4.5, but you have that water stain right there in that, on that right side of the book, and it's difficult to remove that. This video is not in any way an instructional video to how to clean and press books. This is just giving you examples of what individual grades would look like. Okay, this is a 5.0 Forever People number one. This is an average collectible with several moderate defects. This is a very good to fine book. Again, we still have blunted corners. We got some soiling, maybe some water stains on the top of the book. Staples kind of break that color there. Another water stain working our way down. Vent, vent corner, bottom right. But you can already see the difference between a 5.0 and a 4.0. I mean, the appearance of this book is significantly better. Now date stamps do not affect the grade of the book at all. So you see that December 2nd, 1970, that's not going to affect the grade. Okay, we got a color or we got a water stain that top left. The back of this book could be cleaned. Just that generalized dirt there. Kind of what a 5.0 looks like there. Okay, so I do not have a 5.5. A 5.5 is a fine minus, a slightly above average collectible with several moderate defects. Fine. This is a 6.0. A slightly above average collectible with a major defect and some smaller defects or a significant accumulation of small defects. So we're looking for some kind of major defect or many small ones, which I think is gonna, this is gonna fall under that category. Black cover, so you get that, that color rub, that chipping around the edges, blunted corners that lose color, color breaking spine ticks in the black there, reader's crease on the right side. All the colors are still very vibrant in this book, but you have color breaking spine ticks all the way down, many minor defects blunted corners again but there's no real major defect on the front of this book here on the back we have a date stamp again shouldn't affect the grade some soiling on the sides on the spine there the back looks really good could be cleaned. All right, so we're going to jump from a 6.0 to a 7.0. A 6.5 is fine plus, an above average collectible with a major defect and some smaller defects or a significant accumulation of smaller defects. So a 7.0 is a fine, very fine, an above average collectible with a major defect or an accumulation of smaller defects. So this is kind of the top end of a mid-grade book in my opinion. Top right corner is blunted with some color break. 
top left corner as well not as bad colors are still very vibrant in this book got some reader creases on the right that break color a little tear there on that right side the defects become much smaller when, we, when you start getting to these grades where you know they they are still very present if you're if you're knowing where to look but they aren't as apparent color break there bottom right corner has shows where has been uh, breaks color and blunted corners of a comic book are very very important when grading in the back we've got some dirt top left corner is chipped top right corner blunted chipped this is what a 7.0 looks like and you got a huge scuff on the CGC case you don't even have to pay extra for that so this is a 7.5 very fine minus an above average collectible with a moderate defect or an accumulation of small defects. Again, top right corner, blunted color break, some rub on the top there. Top left corner looks okay. Not does not come to a point though. A little wear on the spine. Bottom right corner blunted, bottom left corner blunted. A couple color breaking spine ticks, you can see them there. The back of this book looks very good so far. Looks like it may have been cleaned. Everything's really, all the colors pop, the red, the yellow. There's um, spine ticks on the back. Some general dirt, some soiling there. It's like a little stain there. 7.5. All right, so we are in the 8.0s now. This is a very fine... Uh, an attractive collectible with a moderate defect or an accumulation of small defects. So this is a black cover and you see you can see that that color break right there on the on the spine. When you start getting in those 8O's the books look much much cleaner. Corner comes to a complete point, no color break there. Bottom left corner comes to a point. So does the top left and the top right. We might start getting into some things that I start disagreeing with with the, the grading. And when we get to a 9.6, 9.8, that's when the real questions start popping in blunted corner on that bottom right little tear a little bit of dirt and kind of an indention on that top right all right so an 8.5 a very fine plus an attractive collectible with a moderate defect or a number of small defects Top right corner looks a little blunted. Top left corner is sharp. No chipping on the edges there. Some minor spine ticks, if any. This is when you start looking at this and you start thinking, hmm, could this have gotten a nine? Is this why is this an 8.5? Top left corner looks like it could be dented a bit, could be pressed. 
We've got some dirt around that staple. Dirt around the bottom staple. Yeah, I mean, this is a nice looking book. Eight fives, definitely, definitely uh, very presentable grade. So this is when it starts getting kind of crazy, when stuff starts getting into the nine. So this is a 9.0, very fine to near mint. So this is still considered on that, that end of the no, near mint. DC Comics presents number 26, a very well-preserved collectible with good eye appeal. There will be a number of minor handling and or manufacturing defects. So you can already see a manufacturing defect. This book is like folded, um, like it's like wrapped incorrectly or it's just not well wrapped. Top left is blunted and loses some color. Top right, similar. Colors are very vibrant. Couple small color breaking spine ticks here. You can see three of them there. Bottom left and right corners, very similar. There you can see a better shot of that, kind of that miswrap or that. I mean, it's kind of like a spine roll. Don't really see the spine ticks on the back, especially with that white. Yep, starts getting really clean, really nice in these 9-0s. So this is a 9-2. This is a near mint minus. This is a very well-preserved collectible with some wear and small manufacturing or handling defects. So we expect the corners to be pretty sharp, which they are. You can see those, that little dent, little denting there in that top left-hand corner. They don't always dingy on that. They don't always dingy on that. What got this book is the spine ticks, which you can see a color breaking spine tick there. And these are just small individual spine ticks, as opposed to, you know, when we get into those four, the fours and the fives, there were multiple spine ticks, generalized spine ticks, wear on the spine. Bottom left, same kind of thing as that top left, but the bottom right, sharp corner. On the back, the spine ticks are much more prevalent. Sharp corners. But you can really see the wear and the spine ticks on the back of that spine. So when you get these modern books, these super modern books, and that bottom right corner is dinged there, the difference between a 9.8 and a 9.2 is, is that. These, these spine ticks, these color breaking spine ticks where they just kind of, it's been red or it's kind of been folded and just and it can just happen just very, very easily. All right, a 9.4 is near mint, a very well-preserved collectible with minor wear and small manufacturing or handling defects. So we would not expect to see any real major issues with this book. And this is when stuff starts kind of getting into that gray area. The difference between a 9.4, a 9.6, and a 9.8 many times it's negligible I see one defect there there's a there's a spine tick doesn't look like it breaks color but when I'm looking at this book what I would sit if I were to send that in I would I would be considering I would be you know very hopeful that this would be reaching a 9.8 a 9.8 on the CGC grading scale Got a bit of a color rub there on the spine. And there's that spine tick that wraps around. A little bit of a blended corner on that bottom left, but you know, this is one on a different day. Could have hit a 9.8. This is a 9.6 near mint plus, a very well-preserved collectible with 
several minor manufacturing or handling defects. So this is something, this is a, this is a book that just misses it. This is a book that they say has just enough issues that it's not justifiable to get a 9.8, which the community generally accepts as a, a perfect score. I'm looking at this book and I see no issues. Sharp corners, perfect colors, no spine ticks. You know, it's uh, this. You start looking at 9.6s, and I do not have the eye, or I don't have the understanding of why books get a 9.6 and a 9.8. It's truly a gamble. I see nothing wrong with this book. The colors are absolutely perfect. It's clean as the day it was bought. The corners are sharp, no spine ticks, no color break, no reader's crease, no spine roll. It's a perfect book. All right, last but not least, this is a 9.8 White Pages, a nearly perfect collectible with negligible handling or manufacturing defects, near mint to mint. So there should be no issues. Sharp corners come to an exact point no spine ticks colors should be the same as the day they were printed no issues with the staples sharp corner there but look here looks like a dented corner still reached a 9.8 back of the book Sharp corner there, top right, top left, no spine ticks. Colors are perfect. That's what a mint, near mint collectible looks like, 9.8. Now, there are 9.9s and 10s. That is so rare that they almost don't even exist. 9.9s many times are in square bound books and I have never seen a 10. I'm sure there are some. Guys, the intention of this video was to help new people that are uh, submitting to CGC and just a generalized review of why grades are the way they are following the CGC rubric. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Thank you.